My fellow Americans, when I'm president, we're going to embark on the most ambitious national project in decades. We're going to stop sending $700 billion a year to countries that don't like us very much, and some of that money... attack the problem on every front. We'll produce more energy at home. We will drill new wells offshore and we'll drill them now. We'll drill them now. Friends, we'll build more nuclear power plants. We'll develop clean coal technology. We'll increase the use of wind, tide, solar, and natural gas. We'll encourage the development and use of flex fuel, hybrid, and electric automobiles. <laughs> Senator Obama thinks we can achieve energy independence without more drilling and without more nuclear power. But Americans know better than that. We must use all resources and develop all technologies necessary to rescue our economy from the damage caused by rising oil prices and restore the health of our planet. My friends, it's an ambitious plan, but Americans are ambitious by nature and we face greater challenges. It's time for us to show the world again how Americans lead. <laughs> this great natural cause will create millions of new jobs, many in industries that will be the engine of our future prosperity, jobs that will be there when your children enter the workforce. Today, today, the prospect of a better world remains within our reach, but we must see the threats to peace and liberty in our time clearly and face them as Americans before us did, with confidence, wisdom, and resolve. We have dealt we have dealt a serious blow to Al-Qaeda in recent years, but they're not defeated, and they'll strike us again if they can. Iran remains the chief state sponsor of terrorism and is on the path to acquiring nuclear weapons. Russia's leaders, rich with oil wealth and corrupt with power, have rejected democratic ideals and the obligations of a responsible power. They invaded a small democratic neighbor to gain more control over the world's oil supply, intimidate other neighbors, and further their ambitions of reassembling the Russian Empire. And the brave people of Georgia need our solidarity and our prayers. As president, I'll work to establish good relations with Russia so that we need not fear a return to the Cold War. But we can't turn a blind eye to aggression and international lawlessness that threatens the peace and stability of the world and the security of the American people. We face many dangerous threats in this dangerous world, but I'm not afraid of them. I'm prepared for them.
know how the military works, what it can do, what it can do better, and what it shouldn't do. I know how the world works. I know the good and the evil in it. I know how to work with leaders who share our dreams of a freer, safer, and more prosperous world, and how to stand up to those who don't. to secure the peace. My friends, when I was five years old, a car pulled up in front of our house. A Navy officer rolled down the window and shouted at my father that the Japanese had bombed Pearl Harbor. I rarely saw my father again for four years. My grandfather came home from that same war, exhausted from the burdens he had borne, and died the next day. In Vietnam, where I formed the closest friendships of my life. Some of those friends never came home with me. I hate war. It's terrible beyond imagination. I'm running for president to keep the country I love safe and prevent other families from risking their loved ones in war as my family has. I will draw on all my experience with the world and its leaders and all the tools at our disposal, diplomatic, economic, military, and the power of our ideals to build the foundations for a stable and enduring peace. We change things that need to be changed. Each generation makes its contribution to our greatness. The work that is ours to do is plainly before us. We don't need to search for it. We need to change the way government does almost everything, from the way we protect our security, to the way we compete in the world economy, from the way we respond to disasters, to the way we fuel our transportation network, from the way we train our workers, to the way we educate our children. All these functions of government were designed before the rise of the global economy, the information technology revolution, and the end of the Cold War. We have to catch up to history, and we have to change the way we do business in Washington. constant partisan rancor that stops us from solving these problems isn't a cause, it's a symptom. It's what happens when people go to Washington to work for themselves and not for you. Again and again, again and again I've worked with members of both parties to fix problems that need to be fixed. That's how I will govern as president. I will reach out my hand to anyone to help me get this country moving again. My friends, I have that record and the scars to prove it. Senator Obama does not. Instead of rejecting good ideas because we didn't think of them first, let's use the best ideas from both sides. Instead of fighting over who gets the credit, let's try sharing it. This amazing country, this amazing country can do anything we put our minds to. I'll ask Democrats and independents to serve with me, and my administration will set a new standard for transparency and accountability.